Hey, welcome back, everybody. We'd like you to go through Liz's videos and see if you can find one you like and share it with a friend. Reach out to them, say hi, see how they're doing, and just tell them to like, share, and subscribe Liz's videos. My name's Mr. Reality, and I'm joined with psychic medium Liz Cross. How are you, Liz? Oh, great. Thank you. Black Star. Do you remember when that came out? Shortly after David Bowie passed away. No, what is Black Star? His last album that he worked on just before. Oh, yeah. David Robert Jones, also professionally known as David Bowie, was a pivotal musician back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s and seemed to reinvent himself every decade. I wonder if we could bring in the consciousness of David Bowie and see what's going on over there. Yeah, okay, I've got him. I've got him here. It's been eight years. Wow. David Bowie, what's up? He's doing well. He likes where he is, you know. Why? Why do you like uh, where you are? Because it's more enjoyable up here. But you can't make music. We like your music. But you can't make music and we like your music. That's true, but he he was tired here. Well, you had cancer for 18 months, a pancreatic cancer. Where did that stem from? Where did that stem from? Chemicals. Uh, chemical abuse, chemicals. What type of chemicals? Like drugs and stuff? Is it because of drugs? No, chemicals in the environment. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's terrible. I was going to say kids don't do drugs, but kids don't go outside. Um, what role did the introspection play in your later works like Black Star? He knew that was the end for him. He knew that. That was his goodbye. It that was, was his beautiful eulogy. swan song. That, that was his personal eulogy to the world. Yeah, the videos are macabre and haunting and also beautiful and he it's you know came out and then boom he passed away what what fueled that short life did you know you were gonna cross over so early what short life he knew he was he knew he was never going to be like a aging raver he says what inspired the Ziggy Stardust persona? That was his alter ego. Did he have schizophrenia? Did you have schizophrenia? Mild, yes. Mm. What were your favorite artistic collaborations throughout your career? Um, he had many. Oh, yeah. Well, many, 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 many. Give us uh, a top two or three. Did he have one with Elton John? I don't know. I don't pay attention to those things. He quite likes Elton John, you know. He really does. Um, what other collaborations have you have you done? What uh, was John Lennon one for you? Was that good? It was excellent. I mean, he's had a lot of collaborations. Uh, what about who else? I mean, I feel like they were mostly like British bands, uh, British musicians. Have you had any since crossing over? Have you had any since crossing over? No. Why not? Why not? Why don't you? Because we're just too busy designing our next lifetime. How did you balance your family life and your demanding career? Not very well. He was often absent. Yeah, this is Lexi and or Alexandria. 
Do you still visit her sometimes? Oh, he loves her. Yes, he does. She's beautiful. What's your greatest regret? Not being able to love her enough. He was often very distant, almost afraid to love. Being very deeply in love with someone is is frightening. Did he have any, well, did he have any other past life incarnations with Lexi and Amon? Many, several. It always seemed like a love of the ages, you know, one of those great romances. And, you know, they're, they're always together. I don't feel that they're, they're with anybody else ever but they like the challenges of being different right they've had lifetimes of poverty they've had lifetimes of where they've lost a lot of children through miscarriages stillbirths um so having their daughter was on a soul level, a miraculous event, but she is often in their lifetimes as well. There's actually more children that, that are around in their lifetimes, but just not here in this lifetime. How did becoming a parent change your priorities? Well, it's asking someone who is quite selfish to become selfless. And that was almost impossible. You always seem like you had a lot of energy. Was it just your nature to be very charismatic, upbeat, and full of energy? Yes, he's always been like that. But then he has times when he crashes down hard and he would spend days in bed. It was very difficult. What, how was it difficult? Uh, because it was almost like he'd burn himself out. And trying to function after a burnout is, is really difficult. Can you share any of your beliefs and thoughts about the afterlife now that you're there? It, it's okay. It's not spectacular. You know, we keep hearing this, but it serves a purpose. And and he's okay with that. He's accepted that. What's the purpose? What is the purpose? Uh, to relax and recover. Are there milestones that you can achieve on the other side? You know, like you've got 30 albums. What are the milestones and things you can do over there? It's all about the design and the planning, he says. I mean, can we, are you going to design that back into your lifetime again? No, he's not coming back as a musician again. No. They're actually all going to come back in quite poor. What's the advantage to that? Um, What is the advantage to that? It's all of the life lessons that come with being poor. I mean, there's a lot of emotional attachment to money. And when you're running around in survival mode, life is very, very difficult. But you become very strong if you can withstand it. Is money the root of all evil? Is money the root of all evil? No, far from it. Isn't legacy planning important even in your next life incarnation? Extremely important. So why not incarnate into the money stream you created as David Bowie? So why not? Um, he's not really that bothered about money, to be honest with you. I don't see him as a money person. Now that could be because he's on the other side. You don't got no money over there, right? Everything's free. Drinks are comped. 
All yeah. the sushi you can eat, but you'd have no mouth. Right. So let's ask this. Is there a form of money on the other side? Knowledge, wisdom, experience. And was that important to you here on the earth plane? Absolutely. I feel like that's who he was anyway, which was the the intellectual absorption of as much as possible, the knowledge, the wisdom, the curiosity, uh, clocking up the intellectual miles, being creative. The material and the money that followed was just, you know, a thank you for your time. It wasn't the mainstay. Who did he seek out when he went to the other side after he met with his family? What famous people or people we might know or not know? Who did you seek out on the other side? His guardian angel. And he got down on one knee and thanked the angel profusely, really just thank you and gave so much love and gratitude. You know, there's one thing that he was, which was certainly how I feel now. He's very empathetic, um, very soft in a way with his heart. Oftentimes musicians and people in the fame, they become quite hardened individuals, but he really wasn't. And so what is his mo most profound message that he can give to us that he thinks would benefit people listening? If they take your music, they take your freedom. Don't let them take your music. What does he mean by music? Is that a metaphor or he doesn't want them stealing my MP3s? <laughs> right. Um, what do you mean by me? Your creative, your creativity, your emotions that are in music or come out because of music. If they take the music away, it's almost like we're living in a soulless world, he says. Does he feel like that's the progression of the world so far? Yes. He says that the pendulum is now swinging the other way. And where we had this explosion of music, ideas, creativity, genres, it's now going the other way and it's dwindling down to, well, rock and roll is going to be a thing of the past. What does he think about artificial intelligence and music? Uh, what do you think about artificial intelligence and music? Uh, it's destruction. We're destroying ourselves as a society. How so? How so? Because we're not... We're becoming emotionless. What should people do on the earth plane to keep on, to hold on to their internal emotions and their music? You don't want to hold on to your internal emotions. I think you mean like, hold on, like they can't take them away. Right. But he's saying you should never just bottle up your emotions. You should always find an outlet to release those emotions like he did he released through music and art and and creativity and if you cannot express yourself like one-to-one -one communication then you need to find a way to express it because if you just hold it in you're eventually going to implode on the inside and does he feel like communication is being stifled? 100%. What's behind that stifling? Is it just like a pendulum swinging or is there a darker force behind it? Uh, world dominance, it, he's saying. They, it's all about power and control. 
the yes, very, the very sorry let me give this to you the very few one control of everyone has he met any ets no what do you say anything about life elsewhere in the universe what do you We're forbidden to touch it. By whom? By the structure and nature of the universe. Why is Earth so, I guess, <laughs> blocked from touching out, reaching the rest of the universe? Because it's forbidden. Right, but what's the idea behind that? Who, for what reason? Or is that too high a question for the great Bowie to answer? Ooh, um, no, he can answer. What, who or what is behind that? Uh, it's all mathematically programs. It's mathematical equations, physics. It's, it's the programming of the universe. Why is Earth unique? Because it's the only place that souls can actually go and get into a body and it's an arena, you know, it, it really is just, it's an arena. We, we, we just play this game. We are transported in. I'm like, is this, you know, I've heard this before. Is it like the Hunger Games? Exactly like that. You know, we're being in, we're being down. It's a game that we all play. Earth is the only forgetitarium in the galaxy or in all the galaxies. Is it the only place in the galaxy? Yes. That's within contained within the universe. Yes. What evolution incarnation was David Bowie on his page of incarnate his book of incarnations? You know, he's been around for millions of years. Millions of years. He really has. So let's ask about the previous civilization of David Bowie, since he's been on Earth for a long time. Can he talk about the last epoch or high point of civilization on Earth? When was the last high point of civilization on Earth? Um, well, he's quite fascinated with the Druids. Before them, he like before recorded yeah. history. Oh yeah, yeah. He he. Well, how long has Dru Druidism been around? That's been around for many, many, many years. That concept of Druid Druidism. Yeah, but I'm talking like 120,000, 50,000, 30,000 years back before history. Before history, it's all about. Back then, it was about spiritual energy. It was about whether governments back then, not really established governments like we see today. I feel like there were attempts at governments back then, he's telling me, but nothing like the level of control that uh, we have now. Million years. There's got to be insight you can give us from those past lives to say what was important about those lives i mean pick like your top three um well he was a velociraptor so he was around in the dinosaur era now that that's quite unique i you know i do lots of these soul pa past life regressions and we don't come across that too often. Of all the thousands of sessions I've done, that experience, it, it's not really there too often, but it does come through every now and again. And he certainly was around in the dinosaur era. 
as a human? Were humans around back then too? Humans around back then? No, there was no humans around back then. Life was very harsh when the dinosaurs were around. But that's like 70 million years ago. So now we're back way deep. Yeah, well, that's how, how long he's been been on the earth plane. I mean, there's kingdoms come, kingdoms go. But he didn't really pay much attention to that. How many incarnations has he had? Not just as a human, but in total. In total, how many incarnations have he had? Over 50,000. Have there been any on Mars? Ooh, have there been any on Mars? No. That was a good question. How many human incarnations has he had? He's had a lot, like 10,000. And where does he place himself on the stair steps of ascension? Where do you place yourself on the stair steps of ascension? Ooh, two. Are you just doing it wrong or is it a really tough step to get to step number three? <laughs> Are you just doing it wrong? I mean, no, on a soul level, he's doing it the best he can. But this ascension is exceptionally difficult. And if you take yourself off of the earth plane, you know, on purpose, that doesn't alleviate the ascension issue. That just becomes more of a burden. Well, I feel like I'm between a rock and a hard step because I'd like to stay here forever, but I'd like to get to level 11. So thank you so much, David Bowie. We had a great time chatting with you. I'm sure we'll come up with a billion more questions and we'd like to speak to you again. Yes, and of course, if anybody has any questions about David Bowie, please drop them in the comments section and we will do a part two. I quite enjoyed this. This was interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. And thank you very much, Liz Cross and Mr. Bowie.